let you know, well, I'm so happy to be here with you, finally. He may be taking some photos. I hope that's not a problem for you if like no. your head gets in it or something. Right? So it's Maybe okay. Some faces. Maybe some faces, but we all look so fantastic <laughs> that I, you know, I think it's okay, right? You can always put your mask on. Right. <laughs> we can Photoshop it out. Okay, so today what are we talking about? American accents. American accents. Good. Okay, so we're in the right place. <laughs> And I said, like, I'm here for American X. He's like, no, no, not at all. I'm here for American, for sign language. Oh, darn. Okay, so we're talking about American accents today. But the first thing to think about is, do you have an accent in your language? No, right? Yeah, you don't have an accent. Do you have an accent? No. Do you have an accent? No. I think. You have, you have an accent? I think. Because you're not from here? No, I'm from here. Okay. You have an accent from here, though. Yeah. When you're here, do people say, boy, you have an accent? When you're speaking your language, do people say you have an accent? If I speak with a, a person from Rome. Ah, Rome, that's the key, right? You have an accent. You have an accent when you're not, when you're speaking with someone who is not from your area. Is that correct? So when she and I speak, we say, I don't have an accent, you don't have an accent. But when we talk to other friends, they say, oh, your accent is so strong, right? Because an accent depends on where you are and who you're speaking with, right? So can I show you a video? I'm going to move this over here. You can hear me OK, right? I also have a microphone, but I have kind of a booming voice, so I'm probably not going to need it. So, Denise and I, well, Joe obviously has an accent because he's different than us. Where are you from, Joe? Australia. Oh. <laughs> right? So, since Denise and I are Americans from the Midwest, he has the accent. If he's with one of his friends, and it's just me, of course, then I have the accent. So the accent depends on who the in-group is. In this case, we're the majority, so we say, oh, you're the one with the accent, right? But I want to show you this video that Denise found for me. Oh, it's going to have like some stupid commercial at the beginning, so I'm just going to skip through this advertisement quickly. Skip ads. And it looks like it's a little long, but I think you're going to appreciate it. I want you to notice. What? I'm going to put the subtitles on it. And I'm probably going to slow it down a tiny bit. I'm going to go to 75 just because they speak a little fast. So I want you to notice how many states, how many people, there's one person from each state. How many of these people say, I don't have an accent? <laughs> many of them say they don't have an accent. The other thing that's interesting is uh, at the same time they say my state doesn't have an accent, it's also true that many states that say they do have an accent or something that is specific to their, their region or their area, how many other states say the exact same thing? So we underestimate how similar our accents are, but we also underestimate the fact that we even have an accent, okay? So I, I, I slowed it down just so you can kind of focus in on those two things. One, on the accent itself, if you hear one. And the second uh, is how many of them say, me? I don't have an accent. My state, we're the only one that doesn't have an accent, okay? We start looking at him, he says, I never thought I had, right? So let's play this. I never thought I had an accent, but everyone else told me I did, so I never really understood my accent. But we say soda pop, and that was weird, I guess. The great thing about Oklahoma 
Oklahoma is. It's really this confluence of a whole bunch of different parts of the country. So the, the northern part of the state is really like the plains, so people kind of have that flat Iowa accent. People always know I'm from the Midwest when I say bagel. But if you get down south to the Moon Dixie portion, it has a much more of a southern drawl. Elongating those vowels a little bit. And saying y'all every sentence. How y'all doing today? Y'all want to go to Waffle House? Come on over, we'll go to Waffle House. It's just like go around in your mouth and you're just like, hey y'all, how are we doing tonight? Um, are you guys going to go down to the game this weekend? I'm so excited. Like Josh was doing real great this year. Everybody talks really slow, especially compared to New Yorkers. Most of New Yorkers are loud. You got to fit your way into a conversation most of the times when you're in New York. Vermont's accent is uh, very unique and it's hard to slip into unless you're talking to another person who like grew up farming. But the phrase that I can say in my accent is always, oh sure bud, oh sure. People from California kind of have like, they say like. Colorado doesn't really have a typical accent. Lots of people say that it has no accent, but you'll definitely get called out if you say Colorado. It's Colorado. So I've been told from people in New York that my state has an accent. I've been to Chicago. I don't think we do. There's parts that I can hear like a little bit of a twang and kind of sound like this. Some people in New Mexico have accents, depending on what part of the state you're from. People in the South tend to sound a little bit more like they could be from Texas. Really wide syllables, really kind of drawn out phrases. It's a little sing-songy, like a little bit Valley Girl almost. I'm from New Mexico and I love eating burritos. You want to go skiing up on a mountain? Pass me those taters. <laughs> oh, I mean, like, there's cowboys, you know, there's horses. I don't know, because I don't feel like I have an accent. I went home a couple of years ago and was watching home videos of my sister and I, and we had to, like, do a weather forecast as, like, little kids, and we'd be like, there's a big hurricane coming from the, the left coast, but don't worry because we don't know that it's coming. And people would be like, what are you saying? I can put on the, you gotta park the car and hop the yard and get the car a quarter for some chowder. That's a standard Boston accent right there. Any ER would have an AH at the end. It's kind of like Boston, but cooler a bit more drunk, like we gotta go to Baja, but I get some lobster supper. My mom has this kind of strange half French Canadian, half Boston accent that sounds like peanut characters. Oh, if you're from North Dakota, you've got some long O's. Oh yeah, you betcha. Yeah, hang on to your R's a little too. It gets a little bit thicker the older you are. Your grandma sounds a little bit like this. Your mom might be a little bit softer. I'm from Wisconsin. Go Pack Go. It kind of gets like up here. Go Pack. I say bag. I have some eggs and a beak. The best example of the Wyoming accent I feel like I've ever seen was in Brokeback Mountain. Long curve in the road, and they missed it. So if you live in Washington State, no one ever says they have an accent. They all think they speak pretty normal, which is kind of true. Just kind of middle of the road. Sort of like Delaware itself. But they also kind of have like a country hit kind of thing to them. So they'll say like, Washington, like I'm gonna wash my hands, and you're like, wash? What kind of word is that? We pronounce our T's as D, so we say like Connecticut instead of Connecticut. I feel like Michigan typical accent um, is very nasally. Hi, like that type of vibe. 
So, if I'm from like North Tech, Kauai, I'm going to sound something like this. People say that us Marylanders have accents, but I don't think we have an accent. Idaho doesn't have a really distinct accent. There's no accent in Indiana. Nobody has it. Very I don't think we. I really don't think we have an accent. I don't hear it. But I get reminded of it when I travel. I mean, I, I think this is normal. It's a perfect neutral Pacific Northwest tone. Sarah Palin does not have a typical Alaska accent. She's not really from there. She grew up in, I don't know, Kansas or something. My husband laughs at me because I say wolf instead of wolf. Our accents are all over the place. The first one that comes to my head is the Latino one. Well, I've heard of Cortadito. <laughs> There's the St. Louis accent where we say certain things like quarters and water. Where I'm from, they like to say Haina or Mayan. That shirt over there is Mayan. From Philly, they like to say water and use guys. But in Pittsburgh, instead of use guys, they say yins. What are yins doing? North Carolina is, is it's, it's an interesting accent. It's just got a little bit of a drawl. It's a little lazier. Just very slow pace, very good, very nice. There's Tross in South Carolina, which is my like this. It's more smooth. It might have a daughter named Darcy. And then you got the real squealy, squealy southern accent. And then you just got the bear just, hey, how you doing? God bless. Got some good day now. What about the last one? Okay, what are your reactions to that one? What do you think? I'm just going to show this quick. Did you see how many states do not have an accent? I speak normal. I speak real normal there, hey. That's what we would see in Wisconsin. I don't have no accent, right? So this is, did you see the title of it? Well, I didn't show you the title, the title. Most common language in all the states other than English or Spanish. Now, do you know what the official language is in America? What is the official language? This is not a trick question. Is it English? Is it American? American is English, we'll just call them the same, yeah? English and Latin? Or Spanish? Spanish. We speak uh, Latin, <laughs> maybe in some churches. Um, actually, there is no official language. Isn't that interesting? It doesn't exist. There is no official language. So English and Spanish are the languages we use to communicate official documents and most other things because the largest number of people happen to speak those two languages, but there's no official language in America. So this map is sort of interesting. Thank you, Denise, for pulling this up. These are the languages that in the different states are the third most used language. If you take away English and Spanish, here's what you have. Interesting how in Michigan it's Arabic. In mine it's Hmong. But I remember in the 1970s and 80s there was a large influx of refugees from Laos, for example. Um, look at all the German-speaking areas. This whole area over here, all that area, all German. Vietnamese, look at how the Vietnamese. So this all really just shows Interesting, California, Tagalog, how many Filipinos are there? That's uh, the language spoken in the Philippines. Not Tagalog. Tagalog. Where are the Italians? We know that the Italians are everywhere, but I think in many places the Italians have been, they've lost their language in many places. Which in the first, when the first migrations happened, the Italians were really one of the few peoples who kept their language. But at this point, after several generations, People have kind of, the Italian is kind of exists, um, but not in the way it used to. Although the Italian identity is very, very strong there. So we were talking about this before. In my city, there's an Italian-American association, 
where they don't do bowling, they play bocce. They play, they have the Italian cards, they drink limoncello, but they drink glasses of limoncello like this. <laughs> so they, they're kind of Americanized Italian, but they feel very Italian. Okay, there are also other cultural groups, not only Italians. But we were talking about accents, and Joe was telling me now that, what were you telling me, Joe, about the newer generation of? Second, third generation youth um, have gone back to the roots of their parents. So they'll, they speak in English, but they'll throw in an accent, like an Italian accent or an uh, Arabic accent, depending on what part of the world their parents come from. And it's a deliberate thing. It's not something they've learned, or because parents speak the same language at home. Well, possibly. But we all go to the same schools, we all speak the same, but when it comes to uh, socialising, the accent comes out. Right, or it becomes something that now people are proud of in a way. So in the old days when, say, my grandparents went to America, um, I, specifically my grandfather who I knew and who was, he had actually come over, so I asked him, like, why don't we speak Swedish? And he said, are you kidding? I was a child when I came to America. As soon as we got on land in America, we stopped speaking Swedish. He said, because the belief back then was that if you continued to speak your language, your children would have a foreign accent. They were very, very worried that their children would be bullied and be treated badly because they were new arrivals. And in the hierarchy, in America, you wanted to be, oh, I came over um, with the first Americans on the Mayflower, right? Mm -hmm. So, of course, most people did. There was only one ship called the Mayflower, so everybody else was kind of faking it, right? And so that was then. But then later, for example, now with our different states, there's now a sort of pride that comes from taking, you know, reappropriate, remembering where you come from and making jokes about your, about your accent. So we'll see if we have time, I'll, you know, I'll tell you about uh, a guy from Wisconsin who did something like that. He left Wisconsin to go be a journalist and he thought he didn't have an accent. But when he wanted to be on television, they said, you can't be on television with that terrible Wisconsin accent. <laughs> and he said that was the first time he knew he had an accent. He didn't know, right? But now he does, well, he has a very, um, he's very popular online because he does videos about his accent. Okay, so now it's, in fact, I think when you leave your state, you become much more proud of your state. Just like an Italian leaves Italy, they become very Italian. You know, when I'm in America, I'm just, you know, wishing I'm somewhere else. When I come here, I'm very American. <laughs> okay, so we saw this. I'm just going to move ahead to a little game I want to play with you. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take, as a group, we're going to answer these questions together, and we're going to try to understand what part of America we together are from, okay? There was a young student, an engineering student, who wanted to develop an algorithm to see if he could develop 25 questions where, depending on how you answer them, he can pinpoint what city you're from, okay? So we're gonna do this, we're gonna pretend we're all Americans, okay? Now, I'm not, this time I promise I won't, I kinda want to, though. <laughs> I don't wanna sabotage you, but I just might, I don't know. Yeah, Joe, do you wanna do the, Joe is going to be the technical person. Where can I stand where I'm not in the way? All right. So you're going to help me. Are you ready? So how would you address a group of two or more people? Would you say you all, yous or yous, you lot, you guys, you ones, yins, you other or y'all? Now pretend that you're American. Just choose the one you like. Not, huh? You like you guys? Y'all. Y'all? You. You? You guys. You, two you guys. You guys have it. Go. You just have to click on that. Oops, I don't think it wanted. There you go. Is it correct? No. Of course it's correct. Look at so what we see from this heat map is where it's red, that's where the people use that particular that particular phrase. If it's blue, it means they don't use it. Okay? So we can see that down on the tip of Florida they use it. 
um, in most of the United States except for that southern part. The southern part, remember those states from the video that said y'all, but y'all, there were like one, two, three, there were like five or six states that all said y'all, so you would be a southerner, okay? You like the warm weather, don't you? Okay, here's our next one. What do you call a big road on which you drive relatively fast? Is it a highway, freeway, parkway, turnpike, expressway, throughway? A freeway is bigger than a highway. A freeway is free, meaning there are no tolls. Uh, a highway isn't. Or a freeway has limited access, no stoplights, no intersections, whereas a highway can have stoplights and intersections. What do you think? Highway? Who else? Highway? Okay, we, it's unanimous. Do you have an idea, Julie? No, no. Highway is okay. Highway it is. All right, so again, now we've got the whole eastern part in the Midwest agrees with us. Okay? And whereas the western parts, California, no, they would probably say freeway. Yeah. Okay, how do you pronounce that word? C A R A M E L. I don't want to give it away. With two syllables, as in caramel, or with three, three syllables, caramel, or I use both pronunciations interchangeably, or I use both pronunciations, but the two have different meanings. Who said caramel? You say two syllables? Two syllables. Two syllables? I use both pronunciation, but the two have different meanings. Okay, okay. What about you? <laughs> I really don't know. Two syllables. Two syllables of caramel wins. He says caramel, and he's wrong. Because we have most of the country on our side. Huh? Oh no, there is a right or wrong. And I'm on the right side, you're on the wrong side. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just teasing. He's an East Coast person, we're Midwest and to the left. You're a little bit California. You're a little California, he's a little bit California. How do you pronounce the words mm, mm, and mm? I don't want to give you, because I, I know how I would do it. All three are pronounced the same. All three are pronounced differently. Mm and mm are pronounced the name, but mm is different. Mm and mm are pronounced the same, but mm is different. Mm and mm are pronounced the same, but mm is different. So why don't you give me a number? One, two, three, four, five. Which do you think? Ooh. Four. Other answers? Four. 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 So you say one, two, three, four. Those two are pronounced and the third is different. Okay, let's okay, let's try it. Nobody agrees with you. He tried to tell you. I would say all three the same. Mary, Mary, Mary. What about you, Denise? I would say they're the same. They're the same. What about you, Joe? Mary, Mary, Mary. Which are they the same? No. Which no. one's different? The first two are the same. The Mary, first two and the third. That was was the one. Did you guys no, see that? Can you can you go away? No. If we go back, it'll no, ruin our thing. I tried it. No, no, I understand. No, no, no. Mary, 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 the name. Mary, the name. Mary, as in happy. The name. Or Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Mary, as in marriage. Yeah, That's why I was yeah. Okay, okay, so the name and happy are the same, mm -hmm. but when you marry another person, it's a different one. So I said, <laughs> I say marry, marry, marry. You just said marry. Marry, oh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm becoming Australian. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, okay, so we'll have to work on our pronunciation together. Uh, none of us are from the United States here. We're, none of us are from the United States this time. Um, what do you call a traffic jam caused by drivers slowing down to look at an accident or other diversion on the side of the road? Do you understand the question? You know, that happens sometimes, right? There's an accident and like, there's no reason to slow down. You just want to see if there's anything gory to see, right? So is that called rubberneck? Is it called rubbernecking? Is it called rubbernecking is the activity, slowing down and gawking, gawking, that causes the traffic jam, but I have no word for the traffic jam itself. Gaper's block, gaper's delay, looky loo, curiosity delay, gawk, block. I have no word for this or other. 
Looky, what was it? Looky Loo, Looky Loo, okay? I really don't know. You have to guess, or do, choose the one you like. Rubber necking. Rubber necking? Curiosity delay. What was the other one? Curiosity delay. Curiosity delay. Rubber decking is the activity, that's when you said, okay? Then, and you said? Looky. Looky Loo, and you've got to break the tie. Curiosity delay. Curiosity delay. So we can't decide. So that means you say that's the word. Well, what, do you, what would you say? I, I would say three. Rubber decking is the activity. Then that's you've already got two. But you don't have, I agree with you, so it's going to be rubber decking is the activity. But that's going to put us in the Midwest. But it's, we've got three, we've got a majority. Okay. Right? But so we're going to do, you know, what would you say? Well, we'd use rubber neck as a noun. Okay, so neck it's a rubber neck, it's the traffic jam? Rubber neck is the person doing it. <laughs> <laughs> because rubber, you know what rubber is, right? Like on the bottom of your shoe? It's that material, so if your head is like rubber, so if you're, you're, you know, whew. My instance, if you're driving past and someone's stopping to look at the traffic or slowing down to look at the accident, so he's a rubber neck or she's a rubber neck. Oh, we'd say rubber necker. Rubber necker. Okay. Well, we're going to go with three this time. Three? Yeah. We're going to make sure they're Midwestern. You can go with other. We don't want to go. That's no fun, Joe. Interesting. So, it's interesting because just in Chicago, then, they don't use that. So, rubber necking is the activity. Slowing down that causes a traffic jam. So. Which we experienced on the way here. We did experience that yesterday on the way from Trieste to here. There was some serious rubbernecking happening. Yeah. 20 minutes. 20 minutes of rubbernecking. And we weren't the ones slowing the traffic. It was someone else in front of us. What do you call an easy high school or college class? College, of course, is university. Is it a gut, a crypt course? A crypt course, a bird, a blow off, a meat, or other? Just choose the one you like if you don't know. Boom. You call it a bird. Yes. Could it be? Could it be? Which one? The third. The third one, a crypt course. Crypt course. Okay, a bird crypt course. Which one do you like? Um, the second one. <laughs> the second one is a crypt course, okay? Crypt course. Crypt course, a crypt. Two or three? Three. Three, so we had two threes? Yeah. Okay, we go for a crip. I call it a breeze. I call it a blow off. What do you call it? I don't have a word for that. Oh, really? Because you are so good at blow off. was good. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Uh oh. Okay, so nobody in America, or maybe in that part of the South, they kind of use something similar. Okay. Yeah. How do you pronounce that word? Do you know what they are? Those are the those little things made out of wax that children color yes. with. Okay. Do you call it with one syllable with rhymes with man, cran? Or is it with two syllables, sounds like crayon? Or with two syllables where the second syllable rhymes with dawn, crayon? Or sounds like crown? Or other? The second one. The second because it's French. Crayon. <laughs> okay, you say crayon. Got another one? Yep. Um, Southern. Southern Mexico. What would I say? I would say crayon. Like it rhymes with man. Crayon. Yeah, I never thought about it. Because every time I do this test, it changes the questions. So this one I hadn't thought about. Crayon. You say crayon, I say crayon. See, that's one where our accents are different. Do you have any crayons? Can you say, do you have any crayons? Crayon or crayon? Crayon. 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 What do you call a small road, okay, parallel to the highway? In America, you have a highway, but then you might have a smaller road on the side. This one always gives me away as a Midwesterner. Is it a frontage road, a service road, an access road, a feeder road, a gateway? We have them, but I have no word for them. I've never heard of this concept or other. Hmm? Okay, so who says service? You said service road? Yes. Service road. Gateway? Oh, criminy, we've got two and two. What would you say? Access. Access road? I would say a frontage road. What would you say? 
We use service road or access road in Australia. Oh, well, we got, who said, someone said service road? You did. So which is it going to be? Let Joe decide. Let, let the Australian. Yeah, let the Australian. You said service road. She said access. access. It's okay, it's okay. So it's used somewhere in the south, somewhere in Michigan. It's interesting though, isn't it? That heat map, I think, is so fascinating mm -hmm. to see where, because by now so many people have done this, this test that they have a really accurate idea of where these pockets of people are. What do you call a large wild cat native to the Americans? Or to the Americas, sorry. Is it the mountain lion, the cougar, the puma, mountain cat, panther, catamount, mountain screamer, painter, or other? Puma. Cougar, puma. What else? Puma. What? Puma. Cougar, puma. 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 Who's going to break the tie? Cougar. Cougar? All right, it's a cougar. I don't even know what it calls. I, I would say, I don't even know. Do I have those in Wisconsin? Doubt it. What do you call something that is across both streets from you at an intersection? <laughs> okay, so you have an intersection like this. Yes. Okay, let's say it's here and here. I'm here. This is, but what do I call that diagonally from me? Okay, so what do you call something that is across both streets from you at an intersection or diagonally across from you in general? Is it kitty corner, kitty corner, catter corner, catty corner, kitty cross, kitty wumpus? I would use only diagonal for this or I have no term for this. Catter corner. I have no term. You have no term for this, you said? Catter corner. Kita corner, and you? Diagonal. Diagonal. Oh, this is a disaster. What would you say? Uh, catty corner. What would you say? I would say diagonal. You say diagonal, she'd say catty corner. I'd say kitty corner. <laughs> it's a disaster. <laughs> what, what, what would you say, Simone? Simone, choose one. Kitty corner, catty corner, diagonal, or? I chose um, Kitty Cross. Oh. <laughs> now we don't, we don't, everybody has a different answer, we have to put other than. We can't make, we can't come to a consensus. My opinion. Yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you call the insect that flies around in the summer and glows in the dark? Is it a lightning bug, a firefly? I use lightning bug and firefly interchangeably. A peeny wally, or I have no word for this. Peeny wally. Peeny wally. Firefly. 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 Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is exhausting. I'm waiting for the results. We <laughs> are no results. No results. Okay, but I can tell you. Okay, so a lot of the country agrees with you. Okay, half and half. I don't know what the other's called. How do you pronounce the first syllable of L A W Y E R? Does it rhyme with boy, like lawyer, or does it rhyme with flaw, like lawyer? I use both pronunciations interchangeably. First. The first one, lawyer. Okay. Lawyer. Lawyer. The first. Yes. Lawyer. The first. Lawyer. Hands down. Did you say lawyer? Lawyer. Thank you. <laughs> You're all American. Oh, we're all, this time we're Americans. Good for us. And we're right, we're good Wisconsinites. Do you pronounce C O T and C A U G H T the same? No. No, different. Different? He says different. You say different? 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 Same. Same? Same. What do you think? Same. Different. Same? Different. different. I think difference have it. Mm -hmm. I can't go on the cot. I caught a cold. You know, I use the same. In my, in my, at my Wisconsin accent. So that's, again, Wisconsin. Is Ohio up there? Um, yeah, it's blue under Michigan. 
Yeah, it's blue. That means you are more Wisconsin than Ohio. You're more in the wrong place, Denise. <laughs> All right, do you call the sweet spread in a spread that's put on a cake frosting or icing? Frosting, icing. Frosting and icing are two different things, or both, or neither. Frosting. Frosting. Frosting and icing refer to different things. They're two different things, okay? In my opinion. In your opinion? It's okay. <laughs> we want your opinion. Both. Yes, both. Huh? Both. both. You say both, both? Both. Okay, both, both, both. Frosting, different things. Both. Both. Icing. Icing. So which one won? Both? Both. 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 Yep. I would have said frosting or frosting uh, ice cream, two different things. Okay, what do you call the small group? This is a strange one. We might have to find the photo again. The small gray bug, which is an insect, that curls up into a ball when it is touched. We'll find a photo in a moment. Is it a pill bug, doodle bug, potato bug, a roly poly, a sow bug? So bug. So bug. Basketball bug, twiddle bug, roll up bug, woodlouse, millipede, centipede. I know what the creature is, but I have no word for it. We're going to find a, we hope, an accurate picture, because I think I know what it is. Oh, here we go. Oh, it just disappeared, though. I didn't touch anything, Joe. <laughs> Are you thinking about your answer? I try roly poly. You see roly poly? You don't know what you were waiting to see the photo, right? It's a funny word. It's a funny word. Yeah, exactly. You get to choose. All right. All right. Here's what it is. And a green. And a green. So it's gray. It's gray. Okay. I have no idea. I don't like. Okay. All right, so we have a roly poly. Any other ideas? Just choose one if you want. A basketball bug. It does kind of look like a basketball. A roly poly. Two roly polies. A doodle bug. A doodle bug. What do you call it? A drill bug. I would call it, or what would you call it? We call them butcher boys. <laughs> which isn't even on there. Other. We would call it a doodle bug or a potato bug. But we are going to call it a ro uh, roly poly. Let's try it. I think they're only in hot states because I don't really, we don't have them in in Wisconsin. It's not something we think about very much. Yeah. It is a roly poly. Not in my state, though. So it's interesting. Well done. See? Uh -huh. What do you call the area of grass in the middle? So there's some streets, right? Where you, let's say this is a street. This is the road. This is the road, and this is a green space in the middle. What do you call that? Is it a boulevard, a midway, traffic island, island, neutral ground? I have no word for this. Traffic island. Traffic island? Uh, traffic island is the, um, tra the traduction of Italian. In is Italian, it? Isola del Traffico. Okay, well, could it be that the Italians made it happen? I think Iceland. You think it's, okay, it's not Iceland? What do you think? Median. You, it's a median, is that one of them? Median yeah, or other? Median. And I would say it's a boulevard, but I think that Traffic Island wins. We actually call it a median street. We call it a boulevard, but it's a What did you call it? Traffic Island. Yeah. Traffic Island. Two. No. Yeah, so you should have listened to us. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, so it's probably just a transition. What do you call the area of grass? Ah, I'm sorry. That means that nowhere uh, traffic island uh, <laughs> doesn't exist in the English language in America. Ah, okay. So when it's blue, it means that it's not something. It's not a common thing for us. The closer you are to red, that means that's the way where people actually say that expression. Yes, but I cannot uh, understand if uh, uh, other. Uh, Terms uh, were used. Yeah, you don't know. You had to guess, right? Okay. No, no. Yeah. So she would say median. I would say boulevard. He said median Street. streets. Yeah. So Street. we have those, but we're from. I'm sure other people had other things that were on there. Even we don't know. Okay. 
We only kind of know for ourselves. What do you call the area of grass between the sidewalk and the road? Do we have those here? Sometimes. Here sometimes you have that the side, but there's not grass, but there is that bit of grass. Is that a berm, a parking, a tree lawn, terrace, curb strip, beltway, verge, or I have no word for this. But beltway, cool. Cool. Street. terrace, cool. curb street, tree lawn. Tree lawn. Yeah, oh, we have all different so far. Uh, terrace. Terrace with two terraces. Nature strip. Nature strip, uh -oh. not even there. Other <laughs> curb strip. And I would say I have no word for this, so we're going to go for terrace. What do you call a large motor vehicle used to carry freight? Do you know what freight is? Merchandise, big things, not people, stuff. Is it a semi, a semi truck, a tractor trailer, a trailer truck, a transfer truck, transport, truck and trailer, semi trailer, 18 wheeler, truck, rig, big rig, a lorry, or other? Truck. 18 wheeler. Truck, 18 wheeler, lorry, 18 wheeler. Okay, a lorry. What? 18 wheeler. 18 wheeler? What would you call it? A semi. Semi? Yeah, semi, but in Australia we would say semi trailer, but we tend to cut our words. So okay. Semi. Okay. Semi. Semi. okay. <laughs> We're going to use 18 wheeler. Go. 18 wheeler. You said it was semi, wasn't that? Oh, you're right. But I'm curious to see who said 18 wheeler. Oh, okay. Ah, there are people who say down the south. south. Yeah, down in the south. They call it 18 wheeler. All right. Oh, this is the one where I could I could make it from Wisconsin in two seconds with this one. What do you call the thing from which you might drink water or in a public place? Sometimes they'll have that water that you can drink or the dogs can drink out of it. Is it a bubbler, a water bubbler, a drinking fountain, a water fountain, or other? Water bubbler. A water bubbler? Really? <laughs> water fountain. Water fountain? <laughs> we have a water fountain, a drinking fountain, water bubbler. Simone? I say water fountain. Oh, you said water fountain. Me? Yeah. Drinking water fountain. Fountain. Drinking I'm fountain. Working. Huh? It's a snorting and drinking from which we might. No, it's it's a public, it's um, it's there permanently. It's like those old ones where you go and drink a public drinking fountain. Drinking fountain. Drinking. The drinking fountain. Okay, drinking fountain it is. I'm sabotaging that one. I know. I didn't sabotage you. Good with anyone. But the only place that's not highlighted is my state, because we say bubbler. Okay. What do you call a traffic situation in which several roads meet in a circle? A roundabout. A roundabout. A roadway. Roundabout. Roundabout. roundabout circle. Traffic circle. Traffic circle. Roundabout. Roundabout. Anybody else? Yeah. Roundabout. It is. Oh. Hello, Americans. Hello. You're not. You're definitely not from the eastern seaboard. The navigator. Huh? The car. The navigator. The navigator does that. So to take the second exit. There you have your your um your Google Maps in English. Good for you. Well done. Turn right in Via San Francisco. Right. That sort of. They don't exist here. They they don't. They have a different name for it. They have a rotary up there. They have a rotary. What do you call it when rain falls while the sun is shining? Is it a sun shower? The wolf is giving birth? The devil is beating his wife? Monkey's wedding, fox's wedding, pineapple rain, liquid sun. I have no term or expression for this or other. Pineapple rain. Sunshower. 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 Simone, do you have an opinion? Um, I try monkey's wedding. <laughs> okay. Well, those we're gonna go for sunshower, but we're gonna ask. I have no word for this, but Denise, do you have a word for Ohio? The devil's beating his wife. Oh. Oh. It's real. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> the what? The, the 
The sun shower? So interesting. Minnesota says it in the east and down in Florida. Where they don't have handles. Yeah, where they don't have handles. What do you call the long sandwich that contains cold cuts, which is like your salami and things, and you know, cold things? Lettuce, onions, tomato, you know, those big long sandwiches. Do you call them a sub, a grinder, a hoagie, a hero, a poor boy, a bomber, an Italian sandwich, a baguette, a sarni, or you have no word for this? A sub. What, what? Baguette. A baguette? Sub. A sub? Italian sandwich. Italian sandwich? Are we going to have like a million different answers today? <laughs> <laughs> a baguette? A baguette. You know what? I'm going to tell you, my baguette friends, choose something different, totally un-American. Try another one. Because this happened to us today with the kids and it was blue. So I know that nobody says baguette in America. So give us another one. You said sub. Yes. Do you want to go with our fast food, like Subway? Okay, so that exists, right? You can go sub with her or you can use one of these other ones. He said Italian sandwich. Let's try sub, okay? Wow. Almost the entire country says sub. Because it comes from submarine sandwich. It looks like a submarine. Except in New Orleans where they have poor boys. They have poor boys down there. Poor Which are boys. actually on baguettes. Um, but yeah, they might say the bread is called a baguette, but the sandwich mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. have a different name. But it's called po boy. A po boy. Po boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you pronounce the second syllable of those things you wear when you go to sleep? Do you call it uh, with a vowel in jam as in pajamas, or with a vowel in palm as in pajamas? <laughs> the first one. You say the first one. First one. First. Second. 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 First. 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 Second. 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 First. First habit. Ah, uh, well done. Oh, this is a tough one. What is the distinction between dinner and supper? Supper is an evening meal. Dinner is eaten earlier. Supper is an evening meal. Dinner is the main meal. Dinner takes place in a more formal setting than supper. There is no distinction. They both have the same meaning. Or I don't use the word supper. Or I don't use the word dinner. Remember, think like an American. Same meaning? Where does it say? There is no distinction. They both have the same meaning. Okay, same meaning. First one, supper is evening, dinner is before that. Third one. Third one, dinner is more formal than supper, okay? Second one. Supper is an evening meal, dinner is the main meal. Okay, nobody agrees so far. I agree with someone. You agree with somebody? That's an old fashioned thing in Australia. It's an old. Okay, what do you say? You say dinner, man. You just say dinner, but Supper what doesn't exist anymore. Oh, so you only say dinner. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I like what was yours? There is no distinction. No distinctions are the same. So the same win. Yes. We so don't agree with you, but we'll let you win this one. We would say that you have supper at home and you have dinner at a restaurant, so it's more formal setting. Or when you have people over for dinner. They're coming over for dinner, huh? Nobody agrees. Yeah. Not here. Yeah, not here. Okay. What do you call the rubber soled shoes worn in gym class or for athletic activities? Sneakers. You say sneakers. Uh, uh, sneakers or the gym shoes? Jumpers, sneakers, what did you say, gym shoes? And Trainers. Uh, huh? Trainers. Trainers. I use gym shoes or the sneakers. Gym shoes or sneakers? The sneakers is a type of shoes. Okay. Like this. Are those sneakers? Those aren't sneakers? No. No, those aren't sneakers. What are sneakers? Alright, so what do you think? Sneakers? Let's go for sneakers. I would call them, everything for me is a running shoe. <laughs> wear my running shoes, they, even if they're like that, it doesn't matter. Oh. I'm short tennis shoes. Either. Okay, so where are we from? So these are the results. We could be from Detroit. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All 
all right? But it'll tell us why. Do you see why, um, Joe? These are the, this is what gave us away. Do you pronounce, so caught and caught, we said they were different, so that. Oh, this is the end. This yeah, this is, is the end. This kind of tells us how they figured out, they pinpointed us. So they said that caught and caught, having them as different uh, pronunciations put us in that area. But the drinking fountain put us over there, but also here. So these two are points in common. And then over here, what do you call the rubber sole shoes? You call them sneakers. So for somehow that warmed up that part of the map for us. But I can tell you that there are some answers, but we're basically anywhere. You could you know, live anywhere and feel at home, but probably not in the South unless you're going to Florida. Yeah, you wouldn't get there, they're all mega Yeah, <laughs> you want to be careful with that, right? So there are certain words, though, that are going to distinguish you. In my state, the, the test knows exactly where I'm from. It can, you can just hear me usually. My, it's very clear that I have, an Amer uh, I have a Wisconsin accent. But I use the word bubbler to talk about uh, a public drinking fountain. What would be the word that distinguishes you um, as an Ohio person? Soft drink? She says soft drink for like Coca-Cola and all those carbonated. Soft a soft drink. I would say soda. Or um, like we were talking about, if I didn't understand you or didn't hear what you said, I would say please. Yeah, she says, when I'm talking to her and she doesn't understand me, she'll say please, and I'll be like, is that like Italian, like prego? And I'm like, she said, no, no, we actually say that, because in my state, we say pardon. Pardon? Pardon? <laughs> in my state, the background of the people is German, mm -hmm. so it comes from beat them. So they say, and, and when you sneeze, Gesundheit. Gesundheit, yeah. <laughs> exactly, whereas in mine, we would just say, bless you. But in her state, because, you know, in fact, we should look at that map again to see if Ohio has a German, if that's where the... Yeah, they do. Thank you, Joe. You're in the few perfect. states in the middle. So if we look at... Like the three states that are so... German. That are, yeah, okay, so if we look at our original... Where was it? Oh, I didn't I? I closed it. It's kind of down here. I'm going to reopen it. I have that it first year in it's, it's up there. It's up there. I just couldn't see it. There okay, it so if I look at this again, which one is yours? Okay, this is my own. Is it over here? That's Indiana. That's, yeah, that's Ohio. <laughs> nope, I'm sorry. I don't know where Ohio is. <laughs> that's where, you, where the pointer is. You're on Ohio right there. So Ohio has the third language after English or Spanish is German. So is it any surprise that they say please, please instead of, you know, speak up, I can't hear a pardon, like a what? Huh? A what? A what, which is even worse, okay? <laughs> now, um, this lesson, let me just show you what it looks like. So if you're interested in it, um, I'll share it with Simone, and Simone can send it to you if you want to leave your email address. Okay. Thank you. So the, the only thing you have to ignore is the year. I didn't update this as 21-22, but the date here is correct, so forgive me. But we have this map again, so you can take a look also at some of those things. This was the video we saw before, a bunch of 50 people and their videos. This is a video I did not show you, but it's very interesting because Fred Armisen, who's a, a famous comedian in America, is very interested in accents. So he studied only the southern accents, and he can imitate all the different states. So he does his impression of the different southern states. Um, he also, on Saturday Night Live, which is a sketch show on television, if you do a Google for the Californians, he's the writer of that sketch, and they all imitate the California accent. They all talk with this very strange, exaggerated California actor. It's very funny, but it's this actor. This was the test we just took to see what our accent was. And collectively, we could live anywhere, but we're basically Midwesterners from Detroit, Michigan. Um, if you click on this, there's a paywall. It's because New York Times wants your money. But you should give it to them, because it's journalism is worth paying for. Um, but anyway, I, in fact, I, I did it yesterday because I was like, it doesn't work, it used to be free, now you have to pay for it. <laughs> then there's this section which just explains accents in American, uh, in America, the different types, the New England one, the Maine, New York, but you can read it and try to imitate them. Then, uh, so these are basically ones that we heard about already. This is interesting because we talked about before is what you say, in that we say, 
soda in my, um, what do you call it? You call it? They call it soft drink. They call it soft drink. Oh, soft drink is also popular around here, which is, of course, where, you know, so this is a map that the same guy who developed that, that test we took before also did this one to see where people call different, some people call it Coca-Cola. They call everything, even if you get a Sprite, they say you want a Coca-Cola. Um, this is, if you ever saw the film Fargo, which takes place in North Dakota, they kind of talk like this, you know what, Eric, if you listen to them, you're gonna sound like this. And if you want to hear what a really, you know, tight, Midwestern accent sounds like that's where you want to look, okay? I think you're gonna enjoy it. Not that it's my accent or anything. Okay? Then we've got Charlie Barrett, who's my Wisconsin guy, who uh, talks about in this short clip the first time he understood that he had an accent. It was when he went to go get a job as a journalist. And then after that, he started making videos using his Wisconsin accent as this sort of thing uh, to be funny. For example, this one, he talks about, you know what, you know your iPhone has Siri. Hey Siri, can you get me, tell me this, that sort of voice assistant on the iPhone. He reimagines the Siri for the Midwest. And Siri has a new name, her name is Sharon. And so, hey Sharon, can you tell me what time the Packers game is on? And so, the Siri who Sharon has a Midwestern accent, so that's kind of fun. Then we didn't talk about Southern accents, but also Black English, because there is a very distinct accent that African Americans have, and it's a fascinating story of how it developed and how, um, because of the Great Migration, when African Americans moved from the South to other parts of the country, we have other pockets of people speaking, uh, obviously, Black English, they're African Americans, but bringing that accent up from the South, and how often those words become part of mainstream um, standard American English. So that's the end of our lesson. So if you're interested, in receiving that, maybe you can leave your email okay. and then we can share that with you. Okay? Thank you for coming. We'll see you on Wednesday online. There's another one already. Okay. Yes.